Hello YouTube friends. I've come here today to catch up on the jacket that I'm making out of all the bits of old denim jeans. Uh, if you haven't seen the first video, I'll leave a link at the end and you can watch my thought processes when I was um, putting together some ideas for how I might make this jeans jacket. I'm using this book uh, as the, my inspiration and I'll leave a link to uh, this book in the description below and it's this jacket that's called the Han Ten Jacket and if anybody's been here a long time you'll know that I had a beautiful cat Norma who's 20 years old who died last September and this cat Rita has taken on her place of coming along to bomb the photo when I start making a video she started to do that of course it's because I've started talking uh, it's been pretty quiet here all day uh, I've just started talking so she's woken up to come and say hello so I'm going to say hello and I'm going to ask you to move on if you wouldn't mind because this cat is not as settled as Norma used to be Norma was a lovely cat she would just settle down in the in the video and go to sleep the Han Ten jacket then, which is the pattern in this book that I've just found and lost again. This is the jacket that I'm having a go at making. I'm basing it very loosely on this book and this pattern. Now, I was thrilled with the reception to that video. Uh, there was such a lot of really, really great comments. And I've uh, adjusted my thinking about how I'm going to do this jacket based on some of those comments and also based on the fact that now that I've started to stitch into it I'm really enjoying that so I think I might stitch into it and patch it a lot more than I thought I was going to. Initially I thought this was going to be just a jeans um, like a, a denim coat jacket uh, with um, not very much on it at all. It's turning out to be quite decorated actually. I'm going to show you all the little bits and pieces that I've been doing that I've really enjoyed. So this is the toile or the muslin that I made which is just a it's just very blocky. Block of sleeve, blocks for the back, blocks for the front and uh, this is my basic pattern. In the last video I was wearing it and you can see that it's quite large on me but I quite like the idea of this being quite a loose jacket. Now one of my thoughts was that because this is cotton and it's nice, it's nice heavy weight cotton, it's got a lovely weight to it. One of my thoughts was that I might make an indigo dye bath and dip this and have just an ordinary indigo dyed lining for this jacket. So while that might be quite a nice idea, there were a number of comments from people who said, wouldn't you be worried about the indigo dye rubbing off on your clothing? And the more I thought about it, the more I thought that was a really quite a sensible thing not to wear that amount of indigo right next to the clothes I was wearing. It's not that I wear, you know, white silk dresses all the time, but uh, I think that's actually a really sensible thing. So the decision to dye this with indigo has been replaced. And I'll tell you what with. I have a friend who lives up in the border between Scotland and England, just over on the Scottish side, who uh, I've known her for a long time and she dyes beautiful wool and fabrics with indigo and she got a little online shop which I'm going to leave the link to below. And when I was thinking about all of this I thought I'm going to order some um, goodies from Lindsay. She has a shop called uh, The Border Tart or Tarts Art, one of those things. And so the first thing I thought was I'll buy one of her little borrow boxes and this is the borrow box here and it's a project inside here with lots of different pieces of um, blue Indian fabric. There's some lovely things in here, really really nice things and, and uh, instructions on how to make the project that comes with this kit. But I was interested in the fabrics and so I ordered those from Lindsay and along with that I also ordered some different threads as well to do some of this stitching. 
So when the order from Lindsay arrived with this lovely borrow box and all these different threads, Lindsay also sent me some Indian fabric, uh, Indian block printed fabric. In fact, she sent me quite a lot of Indian block printed fabric. Uh, some, some lovely uh, zigzaggy stuff and there's, um, where is it all? There's some beautiful fabric in here that Lindsay sent me. It was a very, very generous pack indeed, Lindsay. Uh, and there's all sorts of fabric in here, all different sizes. And so the idea came to me that what I should do, instead of dyeing the indigo on the toile, I'll make a lining out of scraps and squares of indigo fabric. So I think that's what I've decided to do. There was an idea that I might use these strips of Liberty somehow in the lining. Uh, these are the strips, all my little bits and pieces of Liberty that I've been sewing as I have a few minutes spare. All the pink scraps and all the blue scraps, I've been sewing them onto this adding machine paper. and making these strips. I think it was Karen at Just Get It Done Quilts where I first saw this, but Robin at RS Island Crafts as well. She uh, has a lovely um, method of doing this as well. And it's just a way of using up um, scraps of any kind of fabric, but for me I was using this Liberty, that you can then tear the papers off and then go on to make it into a bigger project. So with this jeans jacket, I did have an idea that I might use these in some way on the inside. But, and I agree with these comments, a lot of people in the comments were saying it's too good to use it where it won't be seen hardly at all. So I'm going to use these fabrics in a different way, nothing to do with this project, and instead take these amazing uh, Indian block printed fabrics that Lindsay sent me and make a scrappy patched um, piece to go on the lining. So that was that decision, not dyeing this, making the lining out of those. Then the next thing was about doing the embellishments. Now borrow the borrow technique is all about stitching into patches and worn areas to extend the life of the garment a modern borrow is all about doing that anyway uh, over the top of ordinary good good fabric and so i want to show you this piece that i made this was uh several um evenings of stitching into these patches here these were some of the little bits that Lindsay had sent in her borrow kit and some of my own as well. And there's some of my fabrics in here too. And you can see if I put it really close up, lots and lots of really close together stitches. Now, I don't quite know where I'm going to use this in the, in the project, but it will put in an appearance somewhere. But now I want to show you some of the other things that I've been doing on this jacket. So I'll get the pieces down and show you. So this piece is the back. And then I know it looks massive, <laughs> but uh, I, as I say, I like, I'd like it to be loose and quite roomy and all the seam allowances need to be taken in. So with this piece here, what I've done so far, I'll show you the first piece. I did some stitching into this piece here, just little star shapes with uh, embroidery thread. That's what I did with that one. And the way that I did that, because they're quite regular, some of the stitching is just very irregular with no guidelines at all, but some of it, like this one, is actually quite regular. So, so what, what I, did, I did with one of those water soluble fabric markers, I just measured out and put a little dot every now and then so that I could see where I should do the star on there. So the next piece on the back here is this bit. I did this last night and I got a piece of this fabric that Lindsay sent me and stitched it on and then just stitched it very, very crudely really with running stitches all the way down. 
I wonder if you can even see the stitches. You can when I get really close up. So that's all stitched down there now. And when you see the back from a distance, those two um, pattern areas are coming together there now. Now, where do you stop doing this? When do you decide enough's enough? That's the point I'm at at the moment because I then went on to do some work on the sleeves. Let me show you the sleeves. That's just a little piece of my own Indian block printed fabric, just a little slip with lots of running stitches holding it in place. That's on the edge of the sleeve there. I'd already done that part the last time you saw the jacket, but just last night on this sleeve, I've decided to sew another big piece of block fabric with, with running stitches going in this direction. Now I just started doing that one last night and I haven't finished it yet. I've got the top stitches to do here. And so then this sleeve, there's a few pins in, I'll be careful, will go here. Obviously it'll be a bit off the shoulder. Actually, I think I prefer that one to be this sleeve. Yeah, so this sleeve's gonna be here so that this little bit of, of sewing will be seen at the front and then that will be mostly on the back, just a little bit of it. And obviously, as I move, the, the whole thing will move with me. So as you can see, there's a lot of little patched pieces on this jacket. The sleeves have both got detail now. The back has got this. I'm really enjoying how this is coming together. But it's like, where do you stop? When do you stop doing this? And when do you decide to just cover the whole lot and just have a, a patched jacket? Or leave some of the denim showing through? So... <laughs> I don't know. I honestly, I don't know when I might stop doing the stitching. But what that means is that this jacket's a long way off being finished because I haven't even started to think about the lining yet and I'm getting really, really excited about doing the, the, uh, the embellishing. There's lots of really interesting websites, Pinterest, uh, YouTube videos, that you can go and learn all this lovely uh, stitching, sashiko and uh, all the uh, little borrow techniques. And on this piece here, on the, one of the fronts here, I really enjoyed making this. It may, th you may think it looks quite complicated, but in fact, it's really simple. And I'm gonna put a little, um, tutorial if you like or I'll just show you how I made the pattern for this from one of the uh, YouTube videos that I watched. Uh, it's, it, it's coming up next but before I show you that let me show you what I stitched it with. So this little spool of thread here is uh, an indigo dyed variegated dyed thread that was in Lindsay's pack uh, and it's really lovely and it's what I made this with. So I'm going to show you this in a bit more detail, a bit more close up. But there's just one or two other points from the comments that people made that I want to talk about. There was quite a few people thought that this might be good if it was reversible. And that's actually not a bad idea at all. Uh, if I piece this, uh, this lovely fabric together and, uh, and I do it carefully, then it actually might be that this is a reversible jacket not ruling that one out. And then there was another thought that the sleeves are too big. Let's put one of the sleeves back on again. And uh, the idea, someone thought, a few people thought that the sleeves were too baggy. Now, of course, I haven't sewn it together yet. I can have the sleeves any size I like. And it may be that I do take the size of the sleeves down a little bit and make it more jackety and, and less dressing gowny. So that was another little idea. So reversible, great idea. <laughs> now, I'm going to show you the pattern then for this stitching now. 
It's very, very simple. You need a little sheet of acetate, uh, any bit of plastic from, if you have some plastic packaging that's nice and stiff, you could use that as well. So here it comes. I've pinned all the pieces back up now, the sleeves and the two fronts, and the back is here uh, with these panels here that I've done. And I'm going to keep this off the board because I'm, go I'm going to do some more stitching or patching onto this big piece here. Um, because it's such fun to do. So thank you for watching and uh, subscribe if you haven't and click the notifications bell so that you won't miss whenever I post a video. Give us a like, leave a comment. The comments on the last video about this jacket gave me loads and loads to think about, so I really do appreciate all your comments. Thank you. And so uh, that's it for now. Thank you for watching. Just to mention if there are, uh, if you like what you watch here at The Last Homely House, over on Patreon there's years worth of uh, ad-free content over there. I post twice a week to Patreon and once a month I do my big monthly roundup chat. In fact I'm going out there to film some of that now because this morning I went to, um, there was a local sale, plant sale, and I bought this amazing, um, this plant here don't even know what this one's called because the label fell out. I bought that one and this one which is another big tall leafy thing. This one has got a label so I can tell you that this one is a helicanthus. So this helicanthus is coming to join us in the garden and this little tiny guy here is a teasel. This will grow taller than me. So I'm going to go out now and decide where these are all going to go. Uh, I'm going to take my camera with me and do some, uh, some of my May diary. So in the description below, I'll leave a link to Lindsay, where I got all these beautiful threads and, uh, and cotton patches and things from. I'll also leave a link to this book in case anybody's interested in seeing the rest of the projects that there are in here. It's a good book. Uh, and I'll leave some links to any of the things that you might find interesting. I'll see you next week. Bye now. Mm -hmm.